Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're having another sponsored video today from the Mocha Alliance because I've been getting a lot of questions about these Mocha adapters and where you plug them into your network. Now, if you're not familiar with Mocha, what it does in a nutshell is allow you to bridge your local ethernet network over your cable TV wiring. And in doing so, you get gigabit speeds between two places in your home. It works as good as ethernet in my testing. We've got a whole bunch of videos on this, which you can find down below in the video description. But I do get questions a lot of the time from viewers who aren't sure exactly where to place these devices on their networks. And I also have some people asking about the filters that they recommend you use for these devices to keep the network traffic isolated into your home or apartment or office. And I thought the best way to get answers to these questions is to bring in a special guest, Charlie Serino, who is the president of the Mocha Alliance, who's going to uh, help us out here, figure out where to place these devices and go from there. So Charlie, first of all, welcome to the show. Thanks for uh, your support of the channel here. And also uh, thanks for helping to maybe get some answers to some of these questions <laughs> out there for viewers. So can you talk about uh, how Mocha works? Because I don't think people realize how much data and how much information can travel over a coax wire. So why don't we start there? Great, well, thanks for having me. Uh, so the, the Mocha uh, uses frequencies that are above the cable or satellite channels in your network, uh, so they don't, they don't conflict with those uh, signals. And we can share the coax uh, and transport from point A to point B, uh, like this device does, uh, you know, up to a gigabit of, of, of Ethernet uh, data or a bunch of video when you're using the uh, uh, set-top boxes to uh, transport your uh, DVR uh, content from one box to uh, one of the satellite boxes someplace else in your home. So, so Mocha has multi-purposes uh, in the home, and, and a lot of providers are using it, for, you know, to, to move data around. So basically what people would do is... They would put one of these boxes anywhere they have a cable outlet nearby and where they want to get Ethernet, for example, back out. Um, so what I would do, I guess, is plug in my, uh, the wire that might be going to my cable box into the coax in here. And then right. that cable box would then plug into the TV out. And that would basically keep the TV working and now get us the uh, Ethernet portion. Uh, where would I put another one of these on my network? Because I'm guessing I have to, at some point, connect this to my router, right? So what do you recommend? Okay, so the router would plug in via the Ethernet port. So you would take one of your, um, you know, just your standard RJ45 uh, jumper cables and connect it into the one side. Um, and at the other end, you kind of do the same thing. Whatever device you're trying to connect, whether it's a game console or, uh, you know, a, a, another TV set or, uh, you know, a, a Wi-Fi extender uh, that uses e uh, an Ethernet uh, connection, you would just – or a printer, some, an external printer even. Um, it would work, or work well. I mean, you can plug a switch in. At, you know, a little one of those little mini switches, and plug in a bunch of devices. You know, right. it just, just it's just a, a, an easy extension to your Ethernet network. Uh, you know, just think of it as running an Ethernet cable instead of running the coax. It's just that you could just do this by wire that's already existing in the home, so you don't have to run anything. Just connect everything. And normally, you would need two of these: one that's connected to your router, and then one that's connected in the far off place in the home. And that would, I guess, basically bridge the two together over the over the coax network. But some right. people might have this already, right? So some people may not need to buy two of these. Uh, some cable operators build Mocha in already into their existing routers. Is that something that you see out there? Some of the cable modems um, uh, that that are out on the market have a, a Mocha. Uh, device already built in so that you would only need one of them someplace else in the network. And, and I guess right. the only way for consumers really to know what they have might be to contact their operator and say, hey, does my cable modem that you've put in my home have Mocha built in? If the answer is yes, then they need one of these to plug into the remote location and they're good to go. Right. Well, in, in the case where there's a built-in Mocha uh, uh, in the router, um, mm -hmm. usually if you go in through the uh, login to, you know when you where you would assign your 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 web key and all that other fun stuff. Uh, usually there's a, a a section in there that allows you to to uh, uh, modify or or turn on the Mocha side of that modem. If it exists, it'll it'll show up in that in that uh, window. 
Now, the, the next question I've had from a lot of people is about the filter. Um, and what this device does, I'm, I'm guessing, is makes it so that your Mocha traffic doesn't leave your dwelling. Is that the best way to describe it? Yeah, the, the filter has uh, uh, two purposes, uh, and one of them is to keep the Mocha uh, transmissions inside the home, and the other one is to make the network more efficient. And it's called a POE filter or point of entry filter, so that kind of helps tell you where it's got to go. And, and that's it. So you plug it in and then it'll it'll keep everything isolated. Um, and I guess if you're in like an apartment building or something, it's possible that if you don't use the filter, um, your Mocha traffic might get shared with your neighbor, for example. Is that one thing that these filters help with? It's a remote possibility. It's not one that happens very often, but in, in those tight uh, you know, situations where you're, the distance between uh, units is fairly close and depending on how it's uh, connected in the in the apartment building itself, uh, there is a possibility that the data could make it, uh, you know, a limited distance away outside of the apartment. Uh, in the case of a normal, you know, suburban environment, uh, it might make it to the house next door, but it's not going to make it three blocks away. I mean, it it just doesn't have the the energy or the or the design to go that far. Right. So it doesn't have as much power as what the the cable company is transmitting to you, which can go a f much larger distance. So it, it just runs out of runs out of steam essentially before it gets too far away. Well, now we're getting into physics, but the higher yeah. <laughs> the frequencies they go, the faster they attenuate. So the longer the distance, the quicker they go into noise. Got it. Uh, and, and so so that we use real high frequencies and they don't go very far. It's it's kind of like climbing uphill, if you will. You run out of breath quick. Got it. Understood. All right. So let's take a look real quick. We're going to jump into my equipment room to figure out where exactly to put these in. But the installation of the filter is really simple. So uh, what I've got here is kind of your standard splitter that you might see in your uh, cable setup. Uh, and then the filter just kind of goes on top of whatever you're connecting to normally. And then you just plug the, the cable wire back in there and that, that will do all the filtering. There's no electronics here, nothing to plug in, right? It's just a, a passive That's device. That, that is the ideal location in, in like 99% of the cases um, that you would, you would use that filter right there, point of entry. Mm -hmm. So the, the coax comes in and it goes on the end of that. And the only um, suggestion that I, you know, I like to tell people is make sure they're snugged up pretty good. Um, uh, you know, uh, so when you, when, you get it, when you get it to the bottom, then don't leave it loose. Make sure that all the connections are nice and tight and that'll ensure a good connection for your cable operation as well as the MOC operations. All right, cool. So let me go take a look now in my personal setup here in the closet. Uh, so you can direct me as to exactly where to put this. So let me go walk over there real quick and we'll pull it up and you can advise me as to the best filter placement. Is that okay? Okay. All right, let's do it. All right, Charles, so this is my, my equipment room. And what we've got here, of course, is my phone wires, which I don't use too much anymore. Uh, and next to it is my cable that's coming in from the cable company. Now, this wire here is what is coming in from the street. This wire is going to my cable modem right here. And then this portion is going to my TV. Uh, where should I place that filter? Well, the ideal location would be that uh, single uh, connection right at the top there. That's between the outside world and your splitter. So right here is where, you, where I should put that filter and then take that outside cable and just put it at the top here. Right, and make and, sure they're tight. <laughs> and, you're right, and I'm not going to do it now because if I did that, we'd lose the connection here and that would be it. But that's it. I just have to install it right here uh, and I'm good to go and then I'm filtered and nothing else to do. That's correct. And it, there should be you know, no difference uh, you know, in the way your, any of your devices work after you put it in. That's it. That's pretty simple. That's as simple as it gets, the point of entry. All right, Charles, so that's pretty easy. We just put it out there on the point of entry and we're filtered and good to go. Uh, what are some issues that might create problems for Mocha on a local coax uh, wiring network in the home? So if they're maybe not getting the performance they're expecting or it's dropping off at some point, uh, what should they look for to try to correct those issues? Well, I would say the number one problem that most uh, uh, cable service guys find is loose F connectors. 
and uh, where you know people have moved the TV from one side of the room to the other side of the room or something like that, and you know they've unscrewed it and rescrewed it back up on the other side, and they you know just put it finger tight or not even all the way. And you really need to make sure that connector is all the way on and seated and and uh, and finger. I mean, kind of not wrench tight, but as tight as you can make it when you with when you when you squeeze it hard. Um, that's probably the number one problem. Uh, but there's other things that can cause, uh, you know, issues. If you if you recently moved a piece of coax and used the staple gun, the you know, the hide the wire someplace yep. and put a staple through it, that's going to cause a it. problem. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you got a, a you know a, a promiscuous cat that, that likes to chew on things, uh, you know, a puncture into the into the coax can cause a problem. My sister used to have rabbits and they used to chew on the coax all the time. She had pet rabbits. Uh, you can believe that. She used to let them run around from time to time. <laughs> and, and, and that causes a problem. Uh, you know, uh, and if you have rodents or, you know, like little mice or something, they, they've been known to chew on, on, on things and uh, particularly up in the attic or down in the basement, uh, you know, it can happen. So a good inspection of your system, uh, rusted connections or rusted uh, splitters, um, you know, or splitters that are, you know, that have gotten wet or sitting in water or something like down in the basement or outside, where, you know, or in rain gutters. I mean, these things end up in a lot of strange places uh, when homeowners install them themselves. And even some cable guys <laughs> don't do the best job. So, uh, you know, just a good visual inspection of all the connections, all the devices uh, and the coax itself, uh, you know, you'll uncover, uh, you know, uh, you know, most of the problems are, are just mechanical at that point. Um, the, the other thing is if you tug on the connection and the and the back of the, the wire pulls right out of the F connector. That's a problem. Uh, <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah. That means that there's not a good, uh, you know, there's not good continuity there when the connection was made. And, and that needs to be remade, not just stuck. Well, you can stick it back in for a while, but, you know, it's going to continue to be a problem until you, it's, you put a new connector on, um, you know. Now, some of the outside connections if you take them apart they'll look rusted they get mm -hmm. dark from the from the moisture right. uh, and um sometimes they need to be cut off and remade that's usually when you would call your cable uh, uh operator to come out and remake those connections now so people really should then really check to make sure that all those connections that they've got to all their tvs and all their cable boxes throughout the home are really tightened up and secure is that the best practice yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's good for your cable operation as mm -hmm. well as as the as the MOCA operation. I mean, that's just going to keep the signals that need to stay in the coax in the coax, and keep the you know the signals that are outside the coax from getting in the coax and causing some interference. Now, because, if people are looking for like the cable that they connect to their TV, maybe they want to go out and buy it. You know, because we're because we're now taking that cable wire from the wall into here and having another cable wire go to our TV. Um, should they be looking for a specific type of short cable connection? What, what kind of cable should they look for? Well, most cable operators use something called quad shield, uh, mm -hmm. which has basically four layers of shielding between mm -hmm. the, the signal and the outside world. Um, and if you go to most cable stores, if you have one nearby, they, they can provide you with jumper cables uh, that, that are, you know, that are recommended coax that that system uses. Um, but, you know, used to, I used to say, you know, you can go down to Radio Shack and buy a nice right, ball. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> but you can't do that yeah. anymore. So, so if you're looking on Amazon, is there, is there a specific type? Like, usually, is, is it indicating how much shielding the cable has? Is there something that people should look for on Amazon? It should. And, I, mm -hmm. you know, it, it should. And if, if it says quad shield or, you know, uh, if, you know it, that would be recommended. Sometimes they'll, they'll do it in percentages where it'll say 60 percent or 40 percent. Uh, obviously, the higher percentage, uh, the better. Um, mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's rated in dB, and the higher the dB uh, isolation, the better, or shielding, okay. the better. Mm -hmm. um, so, like 90 dB is excellent, and below that isn't as good, and above that is, you know, is, is even better. So, uh, you know. Great. Well, this was helpful because I think a lot of people are, you know, trying these things out. They have to understand that coax networking is a little different than maybe the Ethernet networking they're accustomed to. So. Uh, it's amazing, too, when you think about it, one TV hooked up incorrectly somewhere else in the house could actually have an impact on another portion of the home where the MOCA is working. So tighten those connections up, get uh, good cables to get it all put together. And if you're still having trouble, uh, maybe having your cable operator come out and test your internal wiring and the external wiring might be helpful, too, I guess. Right. Because an outside problem could come in, too. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
Cool. Well, Charles, I want to thank you for this informational uh, interview here because this is a technology that, again, we've covered quite a bit. We had a great interview with uh, you and Rob from the MoCA Alliance about a year or two ago that's still getting watched. And uh, this, I think, uh, will help a lot of folks get some of those uh, questions that they have uh, wrapped up because more and more people are trying this technology because they really want to get that gigabit point to point. Uh, going in both directions without having to rewire their homes and using your existing cable TV wiring is a great way to do that. So I want to thank you for your time today. And if you want more information on Mocha and how the technology works, you can go to mochainyourhouse.org. Uh, keep those questions coming, though, because I'll bring uh, Charles back on uh, if we have additional questions or, or things that we didn't cover in this video to give you a better idea as to where to look for those things. So again, check out all those videos down below if you want to get more information as to how to set these things up and how they work. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.